This is the part where I, I was uh, giving you an update on the State of the Union of the Eclipse Foundation. And uh, let me start off by saying that the State of the Union is good. Things are, things are going great. Um, so we have accomplished a lot in the last year. And in particular, I want to give a warm thank you to Danny Meggard and the whole Eclipse platform team for work, uh, Stefan Herman, uh, Nupar, everybody for doing a great job with shipping Java 9 support in the Eclipse IDE. I know it's been a long road uh, to get all the modularity support and everything into, the, into JDT. So thank you for, for all the work that you put into making that possible. Thanks. And uh, earlier this year, we shipped the oxygen release train. Um, you know, one of the signs that you're getting older is you start to uh, forget numbers. I mean, like, I think this is like the, now the 11th or 12th release train, something like that, where we've... So one of the amazing things, and I, t I tell this story, you know, around the world, all over the place, in various contexts, you know, we run a truly open community that just happens to have the maturity of process and the maturity of the people that are involved to be able to ship large software releases on time to the day for over a decade straight. And that's an incredible accomplishment. And these are like, and these simultaneous releases are non-trivial pieces of software. Like let's not forget that we're talking about, what is it, uh, 71 million lines of code coordinating the activities of almost a thousand different people uh, to ship on time to the day, year after year. I think it's an incredible accomplishment, and thank you to all of the people in this room that were involved. We've had a lot of success in our working groups. Uh, the science working group just shipped their second simultaneous release, uh, so congrats to those. The IoT folks, we just had two more projects uh, for uh, uh, DDS protocol implementation and a Web of Things implementation that were announced, I think, last Thursday or Friday. So the IoT community continues to grow. Uh, PolarSys is doing the continuing to work on the modeling tools. They created the Capella Industry Consortium this year, so they've been busy with that. And finally, Location Tech, uh, which is our geospatial community, um, is just in the process of onboarding yet a couple, uh, two more projects, uh, and it's in the process of uh, being the lead and host for the uh, Phosphor G North American Conference next year. Uh, so that community is is uh, is continuing to grow and uh, do 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 great things in the in the world of geospatial. But what really what we've this what we've become at the Eclipse Foundation, you know, the Eclipse Foundation itself is almost 14 years old, and originally it started off as a place to have an independent vendor neutral home for a few projects. I think when, they, when we first uh, turned, uh, created the Eclipse Foundation, of course there was the Eclipse Java IDE, to, for which we're still uh, best known for, uh, but there was the CDT project that was already around at that time. I think there was about 12 in total. Uh, and all of the projects were about tools and all of the projects were basically building e uh, you know, Eclipse IDE plugins, and we've grown since those you know, fairly humble beginnings to becoming truly a platform for collaboration on innovation. And the sheer volume of technology that's happening at the Eclipse Foundation today is, is incredible. Uh, you know, we have over 340 projects, uh, and as I'm, as I'm about to go through, the growth that we're about to experience is going to be quite incredible. So people are listening to this message that the Eclipse Foundation is uh, is a platform for open collaboration. And uh, this is, uh, by the way, a picture of one of my, uh, my favorite Canadian rock bands, um, the Sheepdogs. And they're, they're a classic story, just like the Eclipse Foundation. They were an overnight success that had been doing road tours and garage bands for over a decade. And, and a, a couple of weeks ago at Java One, that was kind of the way I felt a little bit, is because like all of a sudden, you know, with Java EE coming to Eclipse, which, which I'll talk about again in a moment, um, it's been a huge, huge change in the, in the perception of what the Eclipse Foundation is and, and what it is that we do. So people are really open and listening to this message of open collaboration at the Eclipse Foundation. So this is the big news at the moment. Um, so for those who haven't heard, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Oracle in conjunction with IBM and Red Hat, uh, Tommy Tribe and Payera and a few others announced that they were going to be moving Java EE, lock, stock, and barrel to the Eclipse Foundation. 
so this is an incredible new chapter for us as a community and for the Eclipse Foundation as an institution. Just to put this into perspective, uh, you know, as we're looking through the, the, the list of things that need to be done, bringing Java EE over to Eclipse involves starting approximately 40 new projects at once, um, which is going to be fun. <laughs> uh, so, um, and the thing that's, uh, the thing that's uh, unique about this, if you know anything about the history of how Java has been put together over the years, is that as part of this process, Oracle is going to be open sourcing the TCKs, uh, the test compatibility kits for Java EE at the Eclipse Foundation. So for the first time, the ability to test your Java implementation is going to be open source. And the Eclipse Foundation is going to get into the uh, is going to get into the business, if you will, of writing specifications. Uh, so in the future, uh, the evolution of Java EE is going to be spec'd by a new process that we haven't uh, haven't built yet uh, at the Eclipse Foundation. So this is an incredible new chapter for uh, for us as an institution and and for us as a community. Okay, so this one's not my fault. No, sorry, just kidding. Uh, so anybody who wants to learn more about Java EE, there's three sessions that are coming up. So this afternoon, um, we have a panel, uh, and I'll be on there, and Kevin Sutter and a few other people. David, if you're here, just like, anyway. Um, and then there's a BOF tonight, and then on Wednesday, uh, there's going to be an open Java EE and microprofile, Eclipse microprofile talk as well. So there is going to be, it was sort of late breaking news, but we managed to get some content on the topic in here. Another new project at, uh, at the Eclipse Foundation that I think is pretty interesting is uh, OpenJ9. So uh, IBM open sourced their Java VM uh, at the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, so in conjunction with OpenJDK, you can now get a running Java that's built on top of, uh, on top of a complete open source stack. Uh, and, uh, with, uh, and OpenJ9 is, it's a very mature product. It's, it's been the basis of the IBM WebSphere product line for many years. And interestingly, it started, its, its roots are in embedded um, from way, way back. Um, so it actually is quite small and, and in some ways, is, uh, some ways very suitable for IoT and embedded applications. So it's going to be really interesting to see the trajectory of OpenJ9 over the years. Eclipse MicroProfile started earlier this year, uh, but this is an effort to create specs uh, for microservices in Java uh, at the Eclipse Foundation. And this has been a great project and built a really interesting and vibrant community very quickly at the Eclipse at, the, at Eclipse. And this micro, having MicroProfile at Eclipse was definitely one of the reasons why Oracle was interested in bringing Java EE to us. So it's been, uh, uh, it's, it's been definitely been a big part of our, of our recent success. So what we're seeing with other projects, including Vertex, Jetty, um, Eclipse Link, and Eclipse Collections, that really what's happening at the Eclipse Foundation is we are becoming the center of gravity for innovation in the Java language and the Java platform. Uh, sorry, Java language is probably exaggeration because that's going to keep happening at OpenJDK. But definitely in terms of enterprise Java and in the future, what does it mean to be cloud native Java? These kinds of things are happening at the Eclipse Foundation today. And I think that that's really uh, terribly exciting. So it's been a big uh, couple of months uh, since MicroProfile came, then OpenJ9, then Java EE. We have a lot of work to do, but it's been it's a very, very exciting inflection point in, in the history of the Eclipse Foundation. But yes, we're doing really well in Java, but there's other technology areas as well. So I uh, just want to touch on a few, uh, uh, particularly in, an, in a city in the area like Stuttgart, it would uh, be silly not to mention that we have a lot of activities going on in automotive. Uh, so OpenMDM is building uh, big data tools for doing, dealing with the kind of measurement data that you, that you deal with as, a, as an o, a automotive OEM. Uh, Open Pass is about uh, doing simulation uh, for, to help reduce the cost of devel developing um, uh, advanced driving systems. Uh, Clips Sumo is about doing large scale citywide traffic simulations. Uh, so it comes from uh, DLR, uh, so it's uh, Pretty cool technology. And then Open ADX is a, a thing that we're just in the process of getting started up with uh, organizations like Bosch and Microsoft around uh, building a tool chain for advanced driving systems. Uh, I've been 
in North America, we call them autonomous driving systems, but all my German friends say, no, 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 it's not autonomous, it's only advanced. Um, but <laughs> <clears throat> another area that I think is really cool is thanks to the science uh, working group and uh, our, our friends at Oak Ridge National Lab in, in Tennessee, we have our first quantum computing project. Um, so XACC is a tool set for doing simulations of, of quantum computers. And it's a, it has a very specific goal. That their, their opinion is that for many, many years, quantum computers are going to be like a, an adjunct processor. So it's, there's going to be a hybrid programming model where you're going to be building some of your software using classical computer techniques on a normal, normal computer. Um, and, but you'll have a coprocessor that happens to be a quantum computer, just like for today, in some cases, you might have a GPU. Um, so this is a hybrid programming model for helping you build software that is a mix of classical computing and quantum computing. And uh, I mean, if you know anything about sort of the history of computing, the fact that this is coming from Oak Ridge is, is extremely, extremely cool and exciting. This is definitely one of the centers of quantum computing in the world. Uh, and then machine learning. Um, so AI and machine learning are, of course, very, very important topics. And uh, just uh, uh, two weeks ago, I guess, uh, two Fridays ago, it was announced that uh, by a company called SkyMind uh, that they're bringing Deep Learning for J, which is the leading machine learning framework for uh, on the JVM uh, to the Eclipse Foundation as a project. Uh, so we're starting to get into AI and machine learning as well. And uh, this is a project that's very popular on GitHub, and I think that it has a lot of potential as an Eclipse project as well. And it was one of the things that was kind of fun for us was there was uh, a really interesting Twitter conversation about um, why did SkyMind bring Deep Learning for J to the Eclipse Foundation as opposed to, say, the Apache Software Foundation. And I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but it was it was very gratifying for us who work at the foundation to have somebody say, we love the governance model that the Eclipse Foundation brings to our project. And we chose to bring our project to Eclipse because of that governance model. Um, so that was something that we, uh, that we really appreciated very much. So really, you know, the Eclipse Foundation is a platform for um, innovation and collaboration, and we do this by providing a number of key services to all of our projects and all of the organizations that are involved with us. So it's, it's all about providing governance, it's about you know, project management, it's about providing IT infrastructure, um, IP and licensing management, all of these services that we provide to our projects and our community uh, is really what's enabling the Eclipse Foundation to act as this open collaboration platform. So of course, our, our heritages and tools and um, the Eclipse IDE continues to be a huge part of our present and future success. Um, but you know, basically since the day we started the Eclipse Foundation, we have been doing things other than tools. I mean, we shipped RCP, the Rich Client Platform, which is a runtime, we shipped that in 2004. So we've been doing this runtime, uh, this runtime technology stuff for a very long time, but now the message is getting out and more and more very cool runtime projects are coming to the Eclipse Foundation. And so that's what we do. We are a platform for, for innovation and collaboration. So thank you very much.